the Colossal Titan is a pretty strong dude, or a Titan, or a Titan Shifter. No discrimination. But how can we begin to quantify what he does and determine if he passes the mathematical vibe check? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We have to talk about this later. Let's come back to actually determining some numbers. Instead of going into everything the Titan did one by one, we'll just look at the biggest actions of this Titan, and the biggest probably is the nuke. It's pretty cool how Bertel could just blow himself up and live. And from what I've seen, the large nuke of his was here, when they were fighting at Shiganshina and Bertel wasn't really having it with the scouts. To find the energy of the nuke, we can determine how much energy was released. We can find the energy released by using the equation for the energy of a nuke, which is here. The energy is equal to the blast radius raised to the fifth times the air pressure divided by the time it took to get to that radius squared. Here we see Bertel crouching, and since his height is around 60 meters as the colossal titan, him crouching is maybe around 30 meters. Then, using that value to try and approximate the radius of the blast, we can draw a couple of lines and then assume that Bertel is in the center of the blast, and then from the center to the end is about 50 meters in length, making the radius of the blast about 50 meters. However, since a portion of the blast is covered and it looks a lot bigger than it is, let's scale it to the radius of about 75 meters to account for any errors. Now, to find the energy of the blast, we just need the time. Looking at the blast from the perspective of Erwin, we see that the blast reaches its maximum radius here. But before that, there's a time where it goes from about two-thirds of its maximum radius to the maximum radius in about 0.04 seconds. Then we can plug in the numbers for the radius to be about 25 meters, since this is the change in radius from the maximum radius to the radius at this point, and time as 0.04 seconds, and the density of the air to be the normal 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. When we substitute these numbers into the equation, we see that the energy value is around 74,786,066 joules of energy released in a time of around 0.04 seconds, which also gives us a power of 186,920,166 watts, which is pretty strong, but also on the low end for a nuclear explosion. But it makes sense since Bertolt a nuke is a baby nuke. Now, as for everything else, it essentially pales in comparison to a nuke. I mean, seriously, what's this flimsy punch got anything to do with a nuke? But just for completeness, we'll give a quick look into the force of the Colossal Titan's kick, which is probably the strongest he gets physically. In this clip here, we see Bert extend himself as far back as possible, meaning his leg, the portion that's moving, is about 30 meters above the ground and 30 meters extended. Since the leg rotates, we'll have to use the equations of rotation to find the momentum of the leg, but before that, we need to find the time it takes him to reach the wall. From the clip, we see it takes about 1.5 seconds to reach half of the way to the wall, and so we'll assume it takes him just another half second to reach the last one half of the wall because of acceleration. Thus, Burr's foot travels one-fourth of a circle with a radius of 30 meters in about two seconds. Then, since the foot isn't moving with constant velocity, and has acceleration instead, we can determine the velocity of Bertolt's- we can determine the velocity of Bertolt's foot by first- we can determine the velocity of Berger's foot by first using the angular velocity. Using the kinematic equation for angular velocity and substituting in our numbers, we find that the angular velocity at which Berger is traveling is around pi over 4 radians a second. By using this equation for converting angular velocity to linear velocity, we find that B's foot is moving at about 7.5 meters a second, or about 15 miles per hour. Then we can find the mass of Berger's Titan by assuming it keeps the same density as a human since it was able to destroy the wall. The density of a human is about 1000 kilograms per meter cubed, and by just finding the volume of Bertero's foot, we can then find the mass of the foot. The Colossal Titan is around 60 meters tall, and with the height to foot ratio being an average of 6.6 .6 to 1, the length of the foot of the Titan is around 9.1 meters. Then by using this number, we can then find the height of the foot of Bertero's by estimating the height of the foot to be around one fourth the length of the foot that we found. By approximating the shape of the foot to be a prism, we can multiply everything to get a volume of about 47.1 cubic meters. Then, multiplying this number by the density of the human foot, we find that Bertrand's foot has a mass of about 47,100 kilograms, which is about a fourth of the weight of a Boeing 747. Now, we'll multiply this linear velocity by the foot's mass to find that the momentum of the foot Bertrand carries is about 353,236 newton seconds. Thus, the force applied onto the wall when the foot strikes the wall is about 3.5 million newtons, if the foot stops in a tenth of a second as it hits the wall. So, yeah, still nothing compared to the nuke, but at least Bertoro is complete now. Now, we didn't even look into He-Man's nuke, so we don't even know if this is the maximum the power of the Longboy Titan gets. So, maybe in another part we'll actually solve for He-Man's nuke, but for now, this is as good as it gets.